The problem is we, we want a really long gibberish password. If we don't want, in order for it to be secure. Now, the next problem is, you know, you, you could imagine, okay, I'm going to come up with a really long gibberish password. That's going to be my password. But you don't want to use the same one all the time. Because the other problem is that, say you log on to your bank with your email address and this monster amazing password. It's like, great, that's safe. But if you also log on to, you know, uh, storiesmydogtoldme.com or something <laughs> with that's your the email, problem <laughs> with your your email address and the same and that right. same monster amazing password. Exactly. Now the problem is it's yes, that's really strong. Except that we're not too sure about the security of the website storiesmydogtoldme.com, nor about the employees who work there. Because remember, they got your email address and this amazing monster incredible password of yours. So, um, and, and the same as the it might be the case with malware in your computer. We know that people are getting themselves infected. If Malware saw you log on to storiesmydogtoldme.com with your email address and this monster incredible password. There's nothing to prevent it from rummaging around in your computer and noticing that you're a B of A customer and thinking, hmm, I wonder if this person uses the same monster incredible password for all of the different sites they visit. And so... So you can imagine if you were someone who had an amazing password, but you only used one, right. then, then think of the liability. Everyone on all the sites you log into, whether it's Facebook or Twitter or, you know, tweet me or stories my dog told me and your banks and, and everything, they've got your email address and your password which means it's really not yours anymore. No. I mean, everybody has it. And if there's ever a chance, I mean, they, they could just guess, you know, ah, I wonder if this person uses B of A. I wonder if they use Chase. I wonder if they use, you know, that they could just put in your email address and this password and, wow, it's going to work. If they guess even, like, where you might go, what, you know, like what, what, what groups you're members of. So it is not only do you need a really long, incredibly gibberishy password, but you need a bunch of them. So now we've got a big problem because how do you handle that? How do you manage that? How, how do you, you know, now you literally somehow have to write them all down or record them all, and this is a big problem. If, if it was sufficient to have one really monster, incredible password, then it's like, okay, you could potentially memorize that. We've talked about fun ways to do that. Like think of the lyrics of a favorite song and and choose, you know, the first character of each word in the lyrics in order to help you remember it. And But then, you know, maybe salt it with a few digits in between or if the lyrics have the word four, use the number four, and then, you know, that kind of stuff. So so there there are fun ways to help you with that. But the problem is that's not what you want to do. Because we already established that it's really not safe to use the same or even a small set of really good passwords among a huge number of sites. Because you could, because of this problem of, of, of inter-site or cross-site usage. So the way to be secure is to have long gibberishy passwords and a separate one for every place you log in. That way... No one can ever try to log you in, some to log in as you, to impersonate you for whatever nefarious purpose. If they know your password for this site doesn't help them at all on some other site, which is really what you want. The problem is managing that, which is what, what various password management tools do. LastPass does that. The idea is that it... Uh, that LastPass has plugins 
for that, that is, you know, uh, you know, um, additional functionality that they add to all of the popular browsers. Um, they've got browser plugins from everything from IE version six on up, Firefox version two on all platforms that it, that Firefox runs on. Google's Chrome from version four on on all platforms where Chrome runs. Uh, Safari from version three on OS X and from version five on the PC. And even Opera, which is plug-in hostile. Opera doesn't have a plug-in architecture. So they use something called bookmarklets, which we'll talk about a little bit because that's one of the solutions, for example, over on a browser like the iPad, where it also doesn't allow plugins. They actually have a clever solution. They have their own tabbed browser, which is, I mean, LastPass has now an iPad tabbed browser, which includes the iPad, the LastPass functionality as a way, a way to get it. Because here's one of the thing, one of the reasons I like LastPass so much is They've just completely covered the landscape. Um, for mobile devices, they've got uh, iPhone, iPod Touch, you know, uh, uh, Apple's iOS. Uh, they have the tab browser on for the iPad. They've got their plug-in for Android and for the RIM BlackBerry, for Windows Mobile, for Symbian, and for Palm's WebOS most recently. So it's everywhere. And that's really what you need because... It, essentially, what we're going to do, what, what the security conscious LastPass user will do is, is go through and probably improve your passwords. Probably there's been some laziness along the way. There's been the reuse of passwords that you like or that you've memorized just because, you know, some new site that you're visiting for the first time says, you know, what password do you want to use? And so you go, uh, I think I'm going to use the one that I like. Well, okay, that's a danger, as we've established. So you really need to, to come up with and to even fix retroactively passwords which you're using, which are not safe. The problem is, how do you remember them? And that's what LastPass solves. However, if it wasn't available on anything you might possibly want to log in on, now you've got another problem. Because, you, you know, you've got these long gibberishy passwords that you can't possibly memorize, which is part of why they're so good. But unless they're available on any platform you would, would, would be using, you've got a problem. So they've got the bases covered, I mean, absolutely and completely. Yeah, and I mean, fact, I use everything there could be used under the sun, and I haven't found anything that it doesn't work with. No, it's always there. Even and the fact, iPad. Yes, even the iPad. Um, what these what these bookmarklets are? A bookmarklet is a bit of JavaScript, which is like a URL. That is, it, it sort of runs like script on a page, and that allows them to sort of shoehorn themselves in to literally any browser. So if you if you didn't have any plugin. For, or for example, you were you were using somebody else's browser that didn't have a plugin. You could still use these bookmarklets in order to to get access to your own personal library of passwords. So so that's what LastPass creates is your own personal library of passwords. What LastPass users have or the a, a a level of reasonable discomfort with and i did when i was when i was first installing this and and setting things up lastpass you know has also a form fill in capability and it was suggesting why don't you give me your credit card numbers it's like uh what you know um or and it even has a a a secure vault where you can put just your own notes which you want to have available anywhere that is in, on any of these platforms, you know, containing anything whatsoever. The question is, how is this safe? 